One of the coolest and most productive vegetables that we have grown for the first time this year has got to be this kakuzi gourd. Well, actually, I've been calling it a kakuzi gourd, but I think it's technically pronounced kakuza. But anyway, this is an Italian gourd that has been so productive in the last month or so. Each gourd can get three to five feet long, and we had plenty to harvest this week, even though we only have one plant. And it's awesome that this plant produces so much food, but then the other thing you have to do once you grow that food is to figure out how to cook it. So since this was a new thing for us, I was on a mission to figure out a few different recipes to use up all of these gourds because we didn't really want to eat the same thing over and over again. And with the four gourds we were able to pick that one day, it equaled 15 pounds of food, which is pretty incredible. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a few of the recipes I have been experimenting with to eat these kakutsa gourds. First, we need to prep the gourds. And the first thing I do is cut it lengthwise into manageable chunks because it is so long and I can't fit the whole thing on my cutting board. So I'll usually cut it into like one foot chunks and deal with each of these lengths one at a time. First, I'll peel the skin because the skin is a little bit thicker. And we also have a lot of blemishes on the outside of our skin, maybe due to humidity or due to bugs. I'm not really sure, but it's totally fine because it doesn't go very deep and it doesn't affect the flesh underneath. So I'm just gonna peel off the skin. It's possible that if you pick your gourds younger, you can eat the skin. I'm not really sure about that, but since we always pick our gourds when they're really big, I have been peeling the skin of each of these. Then I'm just going to dice it into about half or one inch chunks. For the skinnier end of the squash, I just dice up the entire thing without scraping any of the insides out because they are still pretty firm, but since a lot of these gourds have one end that is slightly thicker, as you get to the other end, it gets a little bit spongier and then towards the larger end, there will also be some seeds developing if you pick your gourds larger like we do. So when I get to those parts, I'll just give it a little bit of a poke and see how soft those insides are and decide whether or not any of that pulp needs to come out. For these thicker sections, you can see that there are a lot of seeds that have started developing on the inside, so I'm going to make sure that I scrape all of those seeds out. Kind of similarly to if you had a really overgrown zucchini, usually a lot of people will scrape out the insides where the seeds are a little bit thicker, so we're basically just doing the same thing here. You can pick these gourds, as far as I know, when they are smaller. Some people like to pick them when they're about one to two feet long. But these things grow so quickly that we just have never really been able to get to them before they get too big because they are one foot one day and then like two days later they're already three feet long and that's what happened this week and that's why we ended up with so many super long gourds. Once all of the seeds are scraped out, I can just dice this up the same way I did with the rest of the gourd into about half inch chunks. And then I have my gourd prepped for all of the different recipes that I'm going to experiment with this week. I'm going to start with the easiest and simplest thing first. And it's also pretty much the number one thing that came up when I was researching what people cook with this gourd. And it's just going to be a very simple Italian home style soup that uses the kakutsa gourd, some broth and some tomatoes. So in a pot, I am adding about two cups of chicken broth, and then you can use some sort of tomato product like tomato sauce. I had some leftover tomato liquid from when I was canning tomatoes a few days before, and I had saved all of that excess liquid that I didn't need. So I'm just gonna use that instead of tomato sauce since that's what I had, but you can use like pureed tomatoes or something that's a little bit thicker if you want a little bit of a thicker soup. Then I'm going to add about four cups of the kakutsa gourd 
and a little bit of salt and that is pretty much it it's going to be a very simple like brothy soup and from the research that i did it seemed that this was a pretty standard way to cook up this soup some families will add some extra ingredients like onions or potatoes but i chose to leave those out for this recipe just because i wanted to keep it very easy and just dump everything into the pot one other addition was I had some rind from a hunk of Parmesan cheese that was in my freezer and I saw that some people like to add this so I went ahead and put that in since I had it but that's totally optional and I think one of us actually preferred it without that Parmesan added but since it was something that seemed like was more authentic I wanted to try it out. So that's our very simple soup. It's not exactly one that is going to be a full meal, but it's kind of just like a nice little side dish or appetizer that you can serve along with other things. I finished mine off with a little bit of cracked black pepper as well as some fresh basil. Some people like to do some freshly grated Parmesan cheese on top. And I served that along with some pizza and also a peach and tomato caprese salad. So the soup was just a nice addition to other things that we were already eating and a good thing to just make up in the beginning of the week or during the weekend. And we can just have a little bowl of that alongside other meals throughout the week. So that's our easy, simple way to use up the gourd. Just a quick soup where you throw everything into the pot and it's a very classic home style type of soup. As far as the flavor of the actual gourd, it's probably most often compared to zucchini. So it kind of has like a mild flavor. It has a high water content. I think the texture is a little bit different. It's a little bit spongier, yet it stays more firm at the same time. If you've ever had any other kind of gourd, like maybe a winter melon, I think it's very similar to that. For my second recipe, I wanted to experiment with a completely different flavor profile and I wanted to go with an Indian inspired meal where I add a bunch of spices to the gourd. So in a frying pan, I'm starting off with some olive oil as well as some butter. And I'm gonna add some spices to this and toast them off. I have some cumin seeds, some black mustard seeds, as well as a few curry leaves. Then I'm going to add about half of an onion that I've diced and let those fry off in the oil for a minute or two. It already smells really fragrant after those couple of steps with all of those spices toasting off in the oil. Then I'm going to add a couple of cloves of garlic that I've chopped up as well as three medium tomatoes that I've diced. And then I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons of garam masala. So while this cooks off for a few minutes, I kind of wanted to talk about my inspiration for this dish. So when I was doing research about the kukutsa gourd, since I didn't find many recipes, instead of looking specifically for kukutsa gourd, I just looked up gourd recipes because there are a bunch of different gourds out there and I figure most of them are very similar in taste and texture and one of the recipes that I found was using what is called a bottle gourd. That's actually just one of the names. It also goes by calabash gourd or opo squash and this is used in a lot of Asian dishes. So normally you wouldn't use a kakutsa for this, but I think that they are very similar so I decided to just substitute this kakutsa gourd for the bottle gourd. And I think it works really well as a substitution, but that's just an idea. If you are also trying to look for recipes either for the squash or something else, if you're not finding anything for that specific variety, maybe try looking up recipes for something else that's very similar. So meanwhile, I've added in four cups of my prepared gourd, and I'm just mixing that all in with the spices to make sure it is nice and coated. And I'm also adding some salt as well to help draw out that moisture and also to give flavor, of course. And then I'm just going to cook this until the gourd gets nice and soft. The tomatoes are going to contribute to like a thicker sauce. And to make sure that everything cooks nicely without drying out, I'm just gonna put a lid on it. And if there's too much moisture, I can just take the lid off and let some of that liquid evaporate out. Here is the finished dish and I am topping it off with some freshly chopped parsley and I love how this dish came out. There is so much flavor in this and I think that the kukutsa gourd works really well for this dish. 
we had this Indian inspired curried gourd as one part of the meal and then we also had some curried potatoes as well as some fresh garlic naan and it was just such an incredible meal. There were just so many delicious flavors going on in one meal. For my next recipe, what I did was I looked up recipes that used zucchini and I'm just going to try and use the kukutsa gourd in place of zucchini. And I came across these like cheesy kind of casseroles that seem like they are a southern dish. So that's what I'm going to be trying out. I'm starting off with a couple tablespoons of olive oil and butter in a cast iron skillet. I'm using an oven proof skillet here so that I can just stick this whole pan in the oven without having to transfer it to a baking dish later. I have one onion that I've diced up that I'm going to saute in the butter and oil along with some salt and pepper. After that's had about a minute to soften up, I'm going to add a few cloves of garlic that I have chopped up and then give that another minute to saute. Then I am adding about six cups of cubed gourd here. I'm really trying to jam a lot of this into this dish and use a lot of this up. The vegetables will kind of shrink up, so I wanted to make sure that my pan was nice and filled. Adding a little bit more salt and pepper as well as some red pepper flakes. I'm gonna let that cook off for a little bit. I thought it would be nice to kind of cook out some of that extra moisture so that the casserole isn't very like soupy later on. So I'll let that cook for a few minutes and then take it off the heat to slightly cool down. Meanwhile, I'm going to mix up the topping that's gonna go on top of the casserole. I have about a cup of panko breadcrumbs. I'm adding some finely chopped fresh parsley, some salt and pepper, and then I'm going to add a couple of kinds of cheeses. I have this hard aged cheese. I'm not sure what kind it is, but you can use something like a Parmesan. And I also had some cheddar cheese. So I'm adding both of those and mixing this all up. This is gonna make a really nice crunchy breadcrumb topping for on top of our casserole. And the texture of that's gonna be really nice because the inside of the casserole is gonna be really like soft and creamy. So having a crispy topping is going to be a really good pairing with that. I also decided to add some garlic powder and paprika into the topping as well. So once that's all mixed up, I'm just gonna set that aside for now. And once my filling has had a couple of minutes to kind of cool off, I'm adding a few tablespoons of cream cheese to make it really nice and luscious and creamy. I saw this in some of the recipes and you can use up to like a half a bar of cream cheese, but I only had this much left of my bar, so I'm just using a couple of tablespoons. Just gonna mix that up and kind of let it soften and melt in the pan so that I can get all of the pieces evenly coated. And then I'm going to add three eggs that I've beaten, and this is going to help the casserole set really nicely into almost like a custardy texture. So that's why I kind of wanted the pan to cool off just a little bit so that my eggs are not like instantly scrambled. Then before I put on my breadcrumb topping, I'm going to add some fresh mozzarella cheese just because I already had it in my fridge. This is not something that you need, but it wouldn't be Southern food if you didn't have like three kinds of cheeses in it. So I figured it wouldn't hurt. And then on top of that, I'm going to add my cheesy breadcrumb topping. I'm gonna bake this in the oven, which is set to 400 degrees for about 15 minutes, just until the cheese is all nice and melted and that topping has gotten really nice and crispy. And then our casserole will be finished. Here's what the casserole looks like when it's come out of the oven, really nice and crispy on top. And you can see that the cheese has melted and it's so nice and gooey and delicious. Definitely a comforting meal. 
This is a really nice, easy one pan meal. I just did everything in the same skillet and after I cook everything, I can stick it in the oven, which makes it really nice and there are fewer dishes to do, which is always great as well. So I think that the kakutsa gourd works pretty well in place of the zucchini in this recipe. The texture is a little bit different. It still stays a little bit more firm and the flavor tastes a little bit, I think like fresher and sweeter than zucchini. Zucchini is a little bit more like vegetal, but I think that it still works really well in this dish. So I think this is a great way to use up a bunch of the kakutsa gourd. So to complete the meal, we had some roasted okra that I had been cooking in the oven at the same time. And we also had some corn on the cob that I had grilled up the other day. So this plate of food right here is the epitome of summer with all of these different summer vegetables. So those were the three recipes that I cooked up using these 15 pounds of kakutsa gourd. Well, not exactly all 15 pounds, I still have some left to cook. But now that I have a few ideas that have worked out well, I'm definitely going to be repeating them to use up the rest of these. And if you have any recipe ideas for these gourds, please leave them down in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.